Kitchen. I have a soup recipe for you guys. Um, Shauna and Kat was sweet enough to uh, invite some other fellow YouTubers to do a soup collab. And why we chose today was because today is the first day of autumn. So some places it might not feel like it. It's still a little warm here. Um, but we all wanted to join in on this awesome opportunity and share some soup recipes for you guys. So um, I will have the um, playlist in the description box below so y'all can go check it out after you're done with my video. You can go see everybody's soup recipes. I have heard of what everybody is posting and y'all Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to watch and so excited to get some new recipes for soups. We love soup around here, but we're the type of people that don't like it when it's hot, hot. Um, but today it's like perfect. It's like right in the middle of fall and breezy, but the sun's still shining. So it kind of works out perfect. Um, so um, I will have the playlist down below and then I will also have Shauna's um channel linked down below which is Shauna is um Miss Dickinson 1910 and I will also have Kat's channel linked down below and hers is Southern Farm and Kitchen so y'all go over and check um them out if you are not subscribed already which you should be because they're awesome and then make sure you go check out the playlist so you can subscribe and watch all of their lovely videos um because you should already be subscribed to them because they're all just great. So, um, um, I'm going to be making a vegetable soup. Um, I know you're like, come on, Tamara, vegetable soup. Um, it's actually one of, um, my favorite recipes. Um, I've been working with it over the years and it's finally exactly how I want it. It's my veggie soup recipe. So uh, there will not be a link to a recipe in the description box. Um, I will hand type it out because it's mine. It's my recipe. I absolutely love it. Um, it took me a while to get it exactly how I want it. Um, but it's like little bitty things that you wouldn't think would make a huge difference, but it does. And it's a definitely a family favorite family favorite around here so i'm gonna show you um i'm gonna show you start to finish on how um i'm going to make this so i hope you all enjoy this recipe and let's go ahead and get into it okay everybody so first things first you're gonna grab you are going to brown up your hamburger meat. Um, I'm gonna, I do half. Um, this is a pound and a half is what this, that will go in here. Um, and then I'll just add in some onion for some extra flavor. So I'm gonna get it out and chop some up. I'm gonna use my, um, my handy dandy chopper over here. I absolutely love this thing because it makes it so easy to chop up onions. It's less crying. <laughs> this is my little chopper. I've talked about it before. I love this thing. Um, my grandma um or my granny she got it for me um years ago so i can't say exactly where she got it from it doesn't have like a logo or anything on it so um but i'm sure you could look on amazon and just type in small chopper um you know hand chopper and find one okay so i got my onion in there that was almost a full onion and then I'm just going to stop my Now, if you like them rough chopped, like, you know, how I just did, just leave them just like they are. Um, Luke likes any size of onion, cooked onion. I do not, so I chop mine. I chop these up really fine for myself. <laughs> So I'm just gonna add all this in here and I'm gonna let this um, cook with the with the ground beef. And 
and I don't know if y'all know this, but, um, you know, a lot of kitchen equipment, when you're using onions, it's going to leave that odor, the strong onion odor. So all I do is I put some vinegar in here and fill it up with water and just let it soak for a little bit. And then that helps cut that onion smell. So now I said I'm going to use half. this baby in here. Now this I will just put in a Ziploc baggie and we will have it for another meal. Now we're going to let that cook and I'm going to add some seasoning. I'm going to use, I can reach it, I'm so short. <laughs> um, I'm going to use some of the complete seasoning. Let that cook together. So I'm going to let this cook cook up, get it completely brown. The onions are going to be nice and soft. Um, and then I'm going to drain it and I'm going to get some other ingredients out and then I will be right back. Okay, it's all cooked now, so I'm going to drain it off. This is how I drain I am a, um, or my husband's, um, dad, so my father-in-law, he is a preacher, but he's also a plumber, so he, he's like, please don't put any grease down the sink, so I do not put grease down the sink, this is how I do it, I save my containers from, like, when I buy lunch meat, um, and then, so I have the ones that are, you know, I can just throw away. So that's what I do. I take and drain all my grease in these, and then I can pop the lid on once it's hardened or full. And um, I can just throw it away. So please don't put grease down the sink. Y'all, it gets stopped up. You bust pipes. Regardless, if you pour, keep pour, if you pour water, um, if you keep water running with the grease, it's not going to break down. As soon as that water turns off, what's left is going to start hardening and filling up your. So it's best to just put it somewhere else other than your sink. Okay, so I've got that drained off. Now I'm going to start adding in some other ingredients. I'm going to add in one bag. This is 12 ounces of mixed vegetables. I like using the frozen. Ooh. So I'm going to add all those in. I'm just saying there it is. A little end a green bean. Okay. So remember, we already seasoned the beef and the onion. So we've added in the veggies. So for my secret ingredient, what I've added, which what makes it for us, which makes it so much better. This is what I've been working on for years, trying to figure out that secret ingredient that it needed to make it delicious. So, here is my secret ingredient. 
secret ingredient. So I'm going to add one of these in here. And it makes it so flavorful. I love this stuff. So you got one of those. And then... I'm going to add in some tomato juice, which is normal. And then I'm also going to add in some water with the beef cubes. I like doing um, like half and half. And if you do just water, it's just going to make it watery and not much flavor. But when you add the beef cubes in there, you're throwing in a whole extra flavor um, with those. And it makes it really good. So I've got two... Um, medium-sized potatoes. Y'all seen me um, cube up, so I'm going to add those in there. We like potatoes. Already adding in that Italian dressing. It's, this smells good. Okay, so I'm going to start with the tomato juice. And I'm going to add it in first. And how I eyeball it is, um, you know, how far it comes up. This is a two quart um, thing of tomato juice. Okay, so it com it's coming up right to the line of the hamburger meat. Y'all see how it's still thick. So now I'm going to add in. Let's see. Oh, bless me. Okay, so I've got four cups measured out here. Um, but I'm going to just do it like a cup at a time. Or make a big mess so that's one that's two so let's stir it and see how it looks if you like it thicker then don't you know don't add as much water but I would definitely still add um, at least two beef cubes um, if you're only gonna do a little bit so this is going to thicken up once it starts cooking down. So I'm going to go ahead and add in three of my beef cubes. Like I said, this is just going to help bring it more of that rich, that rich flavor. You're not, it's not going to be tomato with some water. <laughs> and if you want to, um, if you don't have the cubes, but you have beef broth, then I'm just use the beef broth. So I've got three of those in there. Now, if you like it thick, leave it this way. I'm gonna add a little bit more um, water so I've added another cup of water so that's three cups of water total and then I'm going to add in a little bit more of the tomato juice like I said this part when I write out the recipe um, it's going to be kind of complicated because I just do it by look you know I use my spatula and kind of feel through you know, and see the consistency of it. So to me, this looks good. This is perfect for how it normally is, how it is for us. And you're gonna have all that flavor from the beef cubes and then your Italian seasoning. So I'm going to put this stuff up. Now you've got a couple options. You can take and leave this on here put a lid on it, let it simmer for a few hours. Or 
you can make it easy on yourself and you can put this in your crock pot or your kasori cooker or your instant pot whatever you've got pop it in there and just let it cook if you do this early like for us it's um it's before lunch time so i'm making it early and i'm gonna pop it in the crock pot so i don't have to worry about it coming back and checking it i can turn it on and let it cook all day and you have all that good flavor going in there um and then before right before we eat i'm going to make some cornbread muffins to go with it um, and I will show you all how I do that as well um, but this is it this is it super easy and delicious so I'm gonna use my kasori cooker I'm gonna turn this off and we are going to pop this in here let's see if I can do it without making a mess probably not So you've got it in there. Now I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna cook it. Probably do on medium, but it just depends on your um, instant pot or whatever. Like I don't have an instant pot, so I can't tell you like time wise on that. Um, but this is a kasori cooker, and I will put it on medium, and I think it's like six hours, four, four six hours or something like that. But um. I will come back throughout just to show y'all um, video clips on how it looks, how it's thickening up, if I need to add anything else. Um, but this is it so far, so I'm gonna pop it on and I'll see you in a little bit. Hey everybody, so I just got home. I checked on the soup. I've got it, I've turned it up. Um, this Kasori cooker, you can change settings. So I've got it on um, brown, and so it's just on a higher heat. I mean, I'm gonna let it simmer up, but it tastes, oh, I tasted it, and y'all, it tastes so good. Mm. So good. So I was gonna do um, jalapeno corn muffins, but I forgot to get jalapenos at the store. Go figure. So I've got broccoli and I've got cheese, so I'm gonna do block, so I'm going to do broccoli cheddar corn muffins. So I'm gonna get you put on the tripod and y'all can see me put this together. Okay, so I'm going to take that, salt, that soup is hot but good. Okay, take one of these. I like using the jiffy and you're gonna follow the directions on the box. So I need one egg and one third cup of milk. These are super simple and these are really good. This is perfect. Um, perfect with any soup. Any soup. You could do it with um, potato soup. Anything. So I need one egg. package of frozen spinach spinach oh my gosh y'all today has just been seriously cannot talk um one package of frozen broccoli i've got it thawing out um, and heating up in the microwave i'm gonna let it cook down really good so it's nice and soft and then we will add it in here and then we will add in about a half a cup of cheese or whatever my oven's ready for these. 
Um, a half a cup of cheese. I'm using the Colby and Monterey Jack. I'm going to spray these. We'll start out with six and see if we need more. Okay, so it's all cooked, so I'm just gonna kinda cut it into different, like smaller pieces. And I'm using the florets. Y'all know I don't buy anything other than the broccoli florets because they're amazing. And you get like an actual whole piece of broccoli. <laughs> Nobody likes the the thick end, the thick ends, of the broccoli. This does have a lot of water in it, where it was, um, you know, from steaming. So I'm just kind of like squeezing it. Looks out there using the leaf blower. So I'm going to use this whole thing. If you don't like, if you don't want a ton of broccoli, you don't have to. Um, but I'm going to just use it all so I don't waste any of it. y'all got some lovely background noise while I'm cutting up this broccoli. <laughs> Okie dokie. So here we go. All that's in there is just a couple little ends. And I'm just going to mix it in. The broccoli was not hot. I let it cool down a little bit. Because, um, you know, you don't want to put it in really hot. Because it will just go ahead and start cooking. Before you even get it all mixed up. Okay, so we got the broccoli. Now we're going to add in about a half a cup of cheese. But this is, this is a Tamara's measuring cup here. So, yeah, that looks right. Okay, so that's it for that. So all we're gonna do is scoop them. We're gonna scoop them in the muffin tin and then we'll pop up in in the oven. Find me a spoon. So everybody in the family likes these, but Luke also likes grilled cheese, of course, with his soup. So he asked if I could make a couple grilled cheese. So we're gonna have um, some grilled cheese as well. But. Okay, 
Okay, so it looks like it makes makes eight. But you can double this, double, double. Oh my gosh, double this, triple this, whatever um, you need, however many you need. Um, you know, if you think your family is gonna eat a couple a piece. So. I've got the oven preheated at 350 and we're going to pop these in for about 15 to 25 minutes. You just want them to be um, completely golden brown and then if you can touch it and it bounces back, y'all know that's my favorite way to check and um, then it's done. If you don't trust that, then you can stick a toothpick in it and see if they're done. Here is everything all bowled up. You've got the grilled cheese and then you all see the broccoli cheddar corn muffins. Dinner was really good. We ended up having company over. So that's why you see four bowls plus Winston plate. But I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Please comment down below, subscribe if you are new and I'll see y'all later. Bye guys.